<laughs> good noonday, good Friday. It's a delight to be with you again. It's a noonday prayer from Old Donation Church, and we're continuing this week's series on um, a study of the Desert Fathers. And mothers. And mothers, and their uh, um, wish to love as God loves. So we'll wrap up this week's study. Our um, psalm today is Psalm 31. It's found at page 622 in the Book of Common Prayer. And Noonday Prayer begins on page 103. As usual. Let us begin. All right. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And the psalm again, Psalm 31, page 622, reading by whole verse. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into the hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols, and I put my trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy, for you have, my, you have seen my affliction, you know my distress. You have not shut me up in the power of the enemy. You have set my feet in an open place. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the streets, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. Lord, <clears throat> let me be as, not be ashamed for having called upon you. Rather, let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be silenced, which speak against the righteous, haughtily, disdainfully, and with contempt. How great is your goodness, O Lord, which you have laid upon those who fear you, which you have done in the sight of all, for those who put you for those who put their trust in you. You hide them in the covert of your presence from those who slaughter them. You keep them in your shelter for the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me the wonders of his love in a besieged city. Yet I said in my alarm, I have been cut off from the sight of your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the sound of my entreaty and when I cried out to you. Love the Lord, all you who worship him. The Lord protects the faithful, but repays to the full those who act haughtily. 
Be strong and let your heart take courage for all who wait for the Lord. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to, to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our reading today comes from Acts, continues our readings of uh, Paul's journey. Acts 13, verses 13 to 25. <clears throat> when Paul and his companions went into the synagogue and sat down, after the reading of the law and the prophets, the officials of the synagogue sent them a message saying, Brothers, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, give it. So Paul stood up and with a gesture began to speak. You Israelites and others who fear God, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with uplifted arm, he led them out of it. For about 40 years, he put up with them in the wilderness. After he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance for about 450 years. After that, he gave them judges until the time of the prophet Samuel. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, who reigned for 40 years. When he had removed Saul, he made David their king. In his testimony about him, he said, I have found David, son of Jesse, to be a man after my own heart, who will carry out all my wishes. Of this man's prosperity, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had already proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his work, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but one is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of the sandals on his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have a special guest speaker today to wrap up our series on the Desert Fathers of uh, To Love Like God. And so I turn you over to dear Father Bob. Thanks, Fred and Mary. We've been having a good time this week with Roberta Bondi's uh, conversations on prayer and love with the early church, with the Desert Fathers and Mothers. Remember yesterday, we talked about living with others as a way for the Desert Fathers and Mothers to grow in their relationship with God, because to love God means we also have to love each other, even those that we find hard to love. And so we talked about their methods and the practices that they used, which allowed them to learn how to love each other well. As we learned, life with others for them was intended to help them learn how to live with God. And their ultimate goal was union with the Holy Trinity, with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But in practice, they learned that it looks a lot like the gift of friendship. They wanted to have close, intimate relationships with not only each other, but also with God, because that had been modeled by Jesus, with his friends, like Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, and Bethany, uh, with the word that he gave to his disciples on the last night in the upper room, he said, now I call you friends. And they knew that God is love, but they believed against the prevailing theology, against the, the current thinking that God should always be high, lifted up, powerful, and therefore distant. Their God was the one born in a barn in Bethlehem who rode donkeys who eats with prostitutes, picks losers as disciples, and ultimately dies on a cross. This is not 
a distant God who is high and lifted up and therefore separated from them, rather who one who walks in their midst. And so they knew that if Jesus is king, but more importantly, their friend, their prayer needed to become conversational and real, just like it would with another friend. There's a story that reflected this about the great monk Abba Moses on his pilgrimage from Sudan to the Petra. And it was said that when he arranged to go, he grew tired in the course of his journey. And he said, how will I ever find water that I need on the way through this desert? And a voice said to him, go and do not worry or be anxious. So he went. When he arrived in Petra, some fathers came to see him, but he only had a small bottle of water left, but he used it all that night, cooking lentils for the fathers and the mothers who joined him in conversation. But the old man did worry. And so as they had a prayer circle for the evening, he kept going in and out of his cell and going out of the group and seemingly to argue. And he went back and forth and they wondered, what is wrong with Abba Moses? And then all of a sudden, the heavens opened and there was a torrent of rain which filled all the cisterns in Petra, which never happens in the midst of that desert there. They all asked him, Moses, what were you doing? Why were you leaving our prayer circle? And he said, I had been anxious with God about God had sent me on this journey and here I am with you, my friends, the servants of God, and I try to provide hospitality, and what happens? I don't have enough water for all of you, so I went out and I argued with my friend. I told my friend, you sent me here. When will you provide what you promised to provide? Moses learned that if in fact God is a friend, he can be transparent and honest in his conversation, which is what prayer is intended to be. And so in Moses' prayers, dealing with his friend, just like you would with any true good friend, you lament, you demand, you apologize, you beg, you thank, and you praise, because in fact, it should be real. It should be the sort of relationship you have with an intimate, close friend that you can trust. Moses understood that. This was the sort of relationship that all of the Abbas and the Amas were trying to uh, develop over their time, and they learned prayer was the key to that relationship. They knew that their goal was to become, as St. Paul says, that it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Well, one of the stories that was told was about Abba Lot, who went to see Abba Joseph. And he said to him, Abba, as far as I can, I say my daily office, I fast, I pray, and I meditate. I live in peace as far as I can with everyone, and I purify my thoughts. What else can I do to make my spiritual life closer with God? The old man stood up, and he stretched his hands toward the heavens, and his fingers became like ten lamps on fire. And he said to Lot, if you will, you can become all flame. In other words, they knew that when they lived in relationship, in friendship, and they had union with God and Christ lives in them, they could be totally alive. I pray that this week has helped you learn how to be totally alive alive in Christ. Amen. Well, let's continue with our prayers, okay. shall we? Thank, Thank you, Bob. Bob, that was wonderful. It's been a good series this week, and we've really enjoyed it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now I invite your prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving aloud uh, on Facebook so we can pray with you or silently at home. We lift up those on our prayer, prayer list this week, Philip and his family, Hope, Barbara, Ethel, B.W., Hank, Steve, Susan, Zachary, Joy, Sandy, Dawn, Bella Rose, Beamer, and Laura, Abigail, Jessica, Anne, Daniel, Betty, Ruth Ann, David, Donna, Sherry, Rue, Chris, Gary, Jan, and Steffi, Ron Myers, Bill Thompson, Lynn Klein, Anna, Joe, Martha, Frank, Alan, and Carol. And we pray, Lord, together that our nation may end this long era of racial violence and injustice. Lord, look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purpose on earth. We pray for the folks, victims of um, hurricane and wildfires and for the um, fire department's rescue efforts, restoration efforts in those cases. We pray for teachers and children going back to school and for parents. We pray for all those medical workers and researchers looking for helps and cures, vaccinations, immunizations, and the coronavirus. We pray for governors, mayors, leaders, and all who help lead our way through this pandemic. Do we have some celebrations? Mary? We do. We happen to have some birthdays today and tomorrow. Today we have Joe Lupton and Jennifer Wheaton. Happy birthday. And tomorrow celebrating birthdays are Ed Butts, Joe Campbell, and Marianne Miller. Wow. Happy birthday, birthday blessings to everyone. We again do not have any anniversaries, but uh, if you do have one and haven't let the office know, please give us a ring. Give us a ring. We'll add you to the list and celebrate your birthdays and anniversaries together. But all those who are having birthdays, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Again, Bob, thanks for that wonderful series on the Desert Fathers. I really enjoyed it. Good. I know the folks did. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Um, fall has arrived for us. The first snow has fallen in the high country. <laughs> and uh, for us here on the Front Range of Colorado, we're enjoying something like 45 degrees overnight. Nice and warm in the 80s during the day, but cool enough to maybe even close the windows at night. We miss you. And we really want to get back uh, to be with you. And so God bless you and keep you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Bye.